I think we can all agree that the majority of lost media out there have a reputation of sparking a lot of interest in many people who hear about them. After all, it's very fascinating to know about something that hasn't been seen by the public in over a year, a decade, or maybe even several decades and beyond. However, in this video I'll be going over lost media that is in the not suitable for life category, whether they are lost as of making this video, or lost for some time before being found. And hopefully I'll mention pieces of lost media that you have never heard of before. To sum up all the lost media mentioned in this video, I'll just say that all of them are so disturbing that they are probably better left lost for the sake of many people's sanities. On June 5th, or June 8th, 1971, an episode of The Dick Cavett Show was being filmed that would feature a longevity and health guru named Jerome Rawdale, who would suffer a fatal heart attack while the episode was being filmed. Rawdale would suffer his heart attack after he finished his interview with Dick Cavett, and sat in a chair next to the then-current interviewee who was Pete Hamill, a New York Post columnist before later having his head suddenly fall backwards as he let out what was said to be a snoring-like sound. Dick Cavett saw what Rawdale was doing and asked, Are we boring you, Mr. Rawdale? Although, Cavett would later mention that he couldn't recall if he had said that phrase or not. Dick Cavett also stated that he somehow knew that Rawdale was about to die and wasn't joking around, and he specifically remembered asking if there was a doctor in the audience to hopefully save his life. While Jerome Rawdale's death is tragic, his death is also very ironic because during his interview, he said that he was in such good health after he fell down a long flight of stairs yesterday and laughed all the way, and also mentioned that he planned on living to be 100 years old, and that he never felt better in his entire life. Cavett and his staff carefully viewed the recording of the incident several weeks later, only then noticing for the first time that what Rawdale had said during his interview was very ironic. And due to the episode featuring a fatality, it was never broadcasted and replaced with a rerun episode. Dick Cavett would later mention Jerome Rawdale's death many times in his life, such as in documentaries, interviews, on his online blog, and elsewhere. To this day, many people claim that Cavett is still in possession of Jerome Rawdale's unaired episode. And while the claim is likely true, it is currently waiting to be verified by Cavett himself so there's still a chance for the episode to be revealed to the public in the future. On May 31st, 2013, a tornado known as the El Reno Tornado touched down in El Reno, Oklahoma, and became known as the widest tornado ever recorded. And during the tornado's destructive rampage, a team of storm chasers working for the Discovery Channel, named TwistX, were caught in the tornado when it suddenly changed course, resulting in all three storm chasers in the vehicle being killed, and becoming known as the first storm chasers in history to die on the job. The TwistX storm chaser team consisted of three people, who were Tim Samaras, his son Paul Samaras, who was their photographer, and meteorologist Carl Young, and they were aiming at chasing the tornado to research it. Tim Samaras, the founder of TwistX, was a well-known and highly appreciated storm chaser, and ironically he was known as one of the safest in the industry. TwistX had previously deployed ground-based research units, known as turtle drones, in the path of relatively weak tornadoes so they can study them from the inside. And they measured atmospheric and seismic data, greatly advancing research of tornadoes. However, this time TwistX were about to deploy a turtle drone in front of a more powerful tornado to obtain even more research on tornadoes. It should be noted that the team was originally trying to photograph pictures of lightning until their radar detected the El Reno tornado, causing them to change their plan and to pursue it so they can try to place a turtle drone in its path. The team traveled alongside the tornado, which was rapidly changing speed, direction, and even size. And while the team was driving towards the highway in an attempt to turn south, deploy a turtle drone, and escape the tornado's path, the tornado suddenly steered upward before darting towards the TwistX team and remaining stationary in their location. 
As the team's vehicle got sucked into the tornado, Paul and Carl were pulled from the vehicle while Tim remained inside. After the tornado had passed, Tim was found dead inside the team's now mangled vehicle, while Paul and Carl were found about a half a mile away, and both dead. After the search for Paul and Carl's bodies, the searchers found multiple belongings scattered in a nearby creek, including a camera that Carl Young used to record their encounter with the El Reno tornado, which had a video of their encounter in it. And although the video they recorded hasn't been released to the public, Gabe Garfield, a friend of the Twist X team, was one of the few to view the video, and helped provide a description of what was going on in the video. The video features Carl saying, There's no rain around here, as the camera shows the air around them growing eerily calm. Before Tim comments, Actually, I think we're in a bad spot, followed by the video abruptly ending. Although, Tim can be heard soon after the video ends, repeatedly shouting we're going to die through their radio. It should also be noted that another storm chaser named Dan Robinson was also chasing the El Reno tornado, and barely escaped it after attempting to photograph it, and his car's dash cam managed to record a video of his encounter with the El Reno tornado, which Dan has released to the public. Dan also recorded another video that featured the Twist X team who was driving behind him, and in the video the tornado can be seen moving onto their car which was the moment the tornado was about to kill them. However, Dan has stated that he will likely not release his other video featuring the Twist X team because he wants to pay respect to their families, leaving his recording of the Twist X team as lost media, as well as the Twist X team's video showing their encounter with the tornado as lost media too. On August 19th, 2010, a concert by a band known as The Swell Season was taking place at the Mountain Winery in Saratoga, California, and during the concert, a 32-year-old man named Michael Edward Pickles left his seat at around 10pm to climb on top of a roof that was approximately 20 to 30 feet above the stage, before purposefully jumping to his death right after the band had finished playing a song named When Your Mind's Made Up. Michael landed just a few feet away from the Swell Season singer, Glenn Hansard, which caused the band and the crowd watching to be in shock, and immediately stopped the concert. Some people came over to see if Michael was okay, while others called for an ambulance. Although, despite a half an hour of CPR revival attempts by paramedics, who just so happened to be attending the concert, he was pronounced dead at the scene by a doctor who coincidentally happened to be in the audience. What's even more disturbing than Michael Pickles is that it was later revealed that Pickles had recently been released from jail on a bail of $150,000 after being imprisoned for threatening to kill both himself and his girlfriend on New Year's Day of 2010, the same year he would kill himself. While there does exist footage of the Swell Season concert before and after Michael's, no known footage showing his has been released to the public despite there being almost 2,000 concert goers attending the concert. However, a YouTube user by the name of Katan did confirm that he or she owns footage of Michaels, but decided not to let anyone apart from the police and the band themselves see it out of respect for Michaels' family. On February 14th, 2018, a 19-year-old named Nicholas Jacob Cruz walked into his former high school, which was Stoneman Douglas High School, located in Parklands, Florida, carrying with him an AR-15 and pulling the nearest fire alarm. As the fire alarm went off, students and teachers walked out into the school's hallways while Cruz opened fire on them, killing 17 of them and injuring 17 others. The shooting ended after 6 minutes, after which Cruz attempted to flee the scene before being caught 40 minutes later. The shooting would go down as the deadliest high school shooting in modern American history since the Columbine High School shooting on April 20th, 1999. And during the shooting, all surveillance cameras were operating, with the school's exterior cameras capturing the police response, and the school's interior cameras capturing the massacre unfolding. 
Of the many surveillance video recordings, only six have been released to the public as of making this video, with the first video being released showing the school's resource officer, Scott Peterson, responding to the shooting, which was released to the public after people started a petition to get it released. Five months later, additional outside security footage was released to the public, which included videos from the school's walkways, main gate, and parking lot. Because the Parkland school shooting is still an active criminal investigation, more surveillance footage of the school's exterior during the shooting is likely to be released. However, surveillance footage showing what was going on inside the school during the shooting will likely never see the light of day, due to how gruesome all the footage is. On May 31st, 1999, during the fifth round of the 1999 British Formula Ford Zetec Championship at Olton Park, a 19-year-old driver named Neil Shanahan was involved in a free car collision, which unfortunately killed him and obliterated his Van Diemen. Neil Shanahan was considered one of Ireland's brightest racing icons due to him winning the Irish Formula Ford Championship in 1998 and because he was considered a likely candidate to enter the Formula 1 championship. Prior to Neil Shanahan's death, he had signed a contract with the Van Diemen international team for both the British and European Formula Ford championships, and during the 1999 season of the British Formula Ford Zetec championship, he managed to qualify for an 18-lap event held at Alton Park after finishing in 10th place. Even before the race at Alton Park commenced, People were concerning the track's safety due to two previous fatal accidents that occurred at Alton Park in the 1990s. During lap 2 of Neil Shanahan's life-ending race, Shanahan was battling for position as he and two other drivers were approaching Clay Hill, when suddenly all three cars collided at around 120 miles per hour, which would cause Shanahan's Van Diemen to exit the track and slam into a protective barrier at around 100 miles per hour, resulting in Shanahan's Van Diemen getting destroyed and one of its front wheels detaching. Although Clay Hill was deemed a medium speed corner, unlikely to produce fatal accidents, Shanahan suffered serious chest and neck injuries that would end up killing him. And while no one knows the exact reason why Neil Shanahan died, it is believed by some, including Van Diemen boss Ralph Furman, that one of the front wheels on Neil's Van Diemen entered his cockpit and brutally hit him. When the track's medical team arrived on scene, they discovered that Shanahan had also suffered a cardiac arrest, which they were eventually able to resuscitate him from before airlifting him to the Countess of Chester Hospital. Sadly, Neil's injuries were so severe that he had no chance of surviving and would be declared dead on arrival to the hospital at just 19 years old, and also became the first Irish driver to pass away during a race since Peter O'Reilly in 1978. During the same year that Neil passed away, the Neil Shanahan Memorial Trophy was unveiled, which is awarded annually to the winner of the World Finals of the Formula Ford Festival at Brands Hatch. And in 2019, an Irish media company known as Off The Ball produced a documentary on his life and career as part of a series called The Classic. Shanahan's fatal accident would cause heavy criticism of Alton Park's safety standards, causing many to believe that no race should ever be held there. And during Neil Shanahan's fatal crash, cameras were there to record it. And it is confirmed that there does exist footage that captures his fatal accident unfolding. However, the footage has never been seen by the public due to it being obtained by Shanahan's parents so they can understand the circumstances of their son's accident. And even if the footage still exists to this day, it is highly unlikely that it will be publicly released. Rob Harris, or Robert Harris if you want to go by his birth name, was an American sky surfing champion and the sky surfing world champion of 1994 and 1995. And if you don't know what sky surfing is, it's basically just skydiving but with a board, known as a sky surfing board, which sky surfers use to do tricks off of. 
On December 14, 1995, Rob Harris's life and sky surfing career would both meet a tragic and horrific end when he would be killed in a sky surfing accident after his parachute lines became tangled, resulting in him being unable to deploy his reserve in time and thus cause him to fall to his death. During the sky surfing accident, Rob was filming a Mountain Dew commercial titled 007, which was a James Bond spoof, directed by David Kellogg and filmed by Janusz Kaminski. And because of Rob's death, the commercial never aired on television. However, a few months following Rob Harris's death, PepsiCo, the owners of Mountain Dew, asked Harris's parents for permission to broadcast a slightly modified version of the 007 commercial containing footage that consisted of Rob Harris's previous takes. And Rob's parents would agree to air the modified commercial in the end, deciding that, quote, Rob would have wanted it, and his friends really look forward to seeing it, and so do we now, unquote. As of making this video, the original unmodified version of the Mountain Dew 007 commercial that contained footage of Rob Harris being killed has still yet to be revealed to the public. Although, a rumor did circulate that the clips from Harris's fatal jump were included in the modified version of the commercial. However, the rumor has since been confirmed to be untrue. And even if it was true, then it would be incredibly thoughtless for the producers to do such a thing. Ever since Rob Harris's fatal accident, several songs have been dedicated to him, and a foundation known as the Rob Harris Foundation was created in memoriam of him, as well as the footage containing his fatal accident being assumed by many to have either been destroyed or confiscated by authorities. So the footage likely won't see the light of day, and that's definitely a good thing for pretty much everyone. This last entry I'll be mentioning in this video doesn't appear to be not safe for life if you just watch it as it is, but rather, it's not safe for life in terms of its disturbing backstory. On March 18th, 1998, an episode of Wheel of Fortune aired that appeared to anyone watching the show as just an ordinary episode of Wheel of Fortune. However, it was later proven by authorities that the episode featured a wanted named Matthew Fenwick, who had just won $4,400 on the show. And at the time the episode aired, Matthew Fenwick was on the run after being accused of two underage girls, ages 8 and 10. A warrant had been issued for Matthew in November of 1997. However, police were unable to track him down until one of the girls that he saw him on the game show, which revealed his identity to the victims and the police. Matthew Fenwick would later be arrested two days after his televised appearance on Wheel of Fortune and pled guilty in July of 1998 to two counts of aggravated indecent liberties with a child. For over 22 years, the episode was unavailable for people to watch on the internet until October 2nd, 2020, when a user of the BioVowel boards forum by the name of WheelFan82 uploaded the entire episode to the forum, 